Have you ever got to the end of a mixing session just to feel like something is missing from your mix, almost as if your tracks don't quite gel together in the same way that your favourite songs do? Well the missing ingredient here is mix bus compression. This is a technique every great engineer uses to glue their mixes together, giving them a cohesive, professional sound. But it's not quite as simple as slapping a compressor on your mix bus and calling it a day. There's actually a lot of subtleties that go into getting the perfect compression for your mix. So in part one, I'll be covering the best way to actually start using master bus compression, which is a step almost everyone seems to miss. Whilst part two and three will go over two must-know compression settings that will give your mix a cohesive, gluey sound. And if you stick around until the end, I'll be sharing a tip with you that can help remedy the negative effects of mix bus compression so you can get the best of both worlds. But before we start, if you want to get your mixes to sound like professional songs, I recommend checking out Sage Audio's mixing and mastering membership. As a member, I have to say the experience is incredible. Just for signing up, you receive 20 free mastered songs per year with your own dedicated mastering engineer, unlimited mixing feedback and access to Sage Audio University for in-depth mixing and mastering courses, but more on that at the end of the video. So before we get into the actual settings, I first want to briefly touch on the best way to actually use master bus compression when mixing. I see a lot of people throw out specific settings you can apply to get the right sound. However, something that doesn't seem to get talked about as much is how you can mix through this to achieve better results. The problem with copying your favourite mixer's compression settings and then sticking this on right at the very end of your mix is that you haven't really set your mix up to work with this compressor and its settings. Through my own research, I found that many engineers prefer to mix through their master bus compressor early on or even right at the very start of a mix. This gives them the advantage of being able to level and feed their compressor the right balance of tracks throughout the mixing process. This allows them to more easily shape and control the way their mix reacts to the compressor at the very end, which wouldn't really be possible if you throw this on last minute, as your levels could easily cause the compressor to overreact and in turn mess up the balance you've worked so hard to already achieve. That's why I like to activate my master bus compressor in the early stages of my mix, usually after I've got a rough balance of the tracks or once I've finished my drum mix. I'll make sure to check my compressor throughout the mix just to make sure it's not overreacting at any point. But the more you practice this technique, the more confident you'll become in knowing the sound of when things are being over or under compressed. Finding the right settings that will allow you to effectively mix through this is very important. So now let's go over two types of master bus compression you could use. The first settings you can try using is the classic SSL G master bus technique. These are common settings used by mixing and mastering engineers for decades. Because of this, our ears have become very used to this sound, so it's a pretty safe bet to use if you're not sure where to first start. These settings usually consist of a 4 to 1 ratio, a slow attack usually set to 10 milliseconds, or in some cases 30 milliseconds, and the release set to auto. The idea of these settings is that it creates that glowy sound through some level interaction between the different sections of your mix. So by slightly bringing up the lower level signals and reducing the louder sections, this leaves you with a more cohesive sound overall. If you think about a typical rock mix, you have elements like drums and vocals that are very dynamic and transient heavy mixed with tracks like electric guitars and bass that usually have far less transient detail to them. So you'll naturally find a slight disconnect between these when mixing, which is why this compression technique can be so beneficial when used correctly. But instead of just talking about it, I'll play you an example using the settings I've just given you, and you can let me know in the comments if you think this mix sounds any more glued together when the compression is applied. The other master bus compression technique, which is the one I use almost every time, is even more helpful when dealing with that problem I mentioned earlier about having a disconnect between the more transient heavy and transient light mix elements. It really focuses on the snare and makes the compressor react to this specifically. If you often struggle to get your drums to fit right in a mix, then this is the compression settings for you. These being a fast attack set at 0.3, a fast release set at 0.1, and a 4 to 1 ratio. It's also important to use a compressor with a high pass filter, as we're really looking to use the snare as the main trigger for this compression. So most of the time, you don't want the kick, or at least not a substantial amount of the kick, to also be triggering the compressor. Normally, I'll be looking to get around minus 3 dB in gain reduction whenever the snare hits. I'll quickly dial this in now, so you can get an idea of how this looks and sounds. So as I said, this compression technique is really hyper-focused on the snare, 
and we're essentially using that track to affect and bring up everything else, whilst the snare itself gets stuck down slightly. Setting the right frequency for the high pass filter is crucial here, as you want to make sure the snare is the main thing that's driving this compressor. I have in the past found some mixers that work without using the high pass filter at all, but these tend to be mixers that are a little more mellow in sound. If you have anything that's heavy or just has a lot of dynamic drums going on, you'll likely want to set this around 50Hz or higher as a starting point. So let's do a quick AB of this master bus compression technique and I want you to really focus on the snare and how the compressor reacts when it's active. If you're struggling to hear the effect compression is having on your mix, which is definitely a common issue every mixer goes through, then I'd suggest over exaggerating this effect first and then backing things off to a more reasonable level. The reason for this is that it can be difficult to pick up on the subtleties mix bus compression can add to your mix, so by overdoing this first you'll be more easily able to hear the effect that the attack, release and ratio settings are having on your mix. I'll demonstrate this idea to you now, and I'll add some words on screen to describe how I hear the audio being affected, which might help you to better conceptualise things for yourself. If you're looking to go a little more advanced with this technique, you can also try to time the subtle pumping sound of the compressor to the tempo of your track. This can be a little difficult to do, but try using the over-exaggerated technique I've just shown you, and play about with the attack and release controls until you feel like you've got your sound locked in with the tempo of your song. Then once again back off the threshold to a more reasonable level. It can also help to do this to a click track to really lock in with the groove. So now you know the importance of mixing through a master bus compressor early on, and the two types of settings you can use for this, I've got one final technique to show you to take these settings that one step further, and that is by using this on a parallel channel. This can be somewhat of a remedy to the drawbacks that over compressing your master bus can have on your overall mix. The idea is to apply this compression on its own individual channel, and then blend this back in with your regular mix. This gives you the best of both worlds as you can retain the punch from your uncompressed mix, but blend in a bit of this gluey, harmonically saturated mix to taste. Or you can apply different mix bus compression settings to both channels and then blend these two together. This feature allows you to bypass undesirable effects in traditional single channel processing. For instance, imagine you're aiming to compress a rock mix heavily to achieve a pulsating, energetic sound with loads of gritty distortion added in. However, as you push the compressor to its limits, you realise that the kick and snare hits are losing their impact, and no amount of tweaking seems to fix it. To overcome this issue, a workaround is to set up a parallel master bus. Here, you can route a portion of the kick and snare signals to the secondary bus, effectively bypassing the main compressor. This preserves the dynamics of the drums in the final mix, allowing them to retain their punch by sidestepping the intense processing applied to the rest of the track. To do this, create a new track in your DAW and label it accordingly. Then, you want to pick specific tracks or buses to route to this newly created parallel track. I'm going to take that same example and overcompress my original master bus to the point at which the punch of my drum transients are being negatively affected. In this case, I'll choose to send my kick and snare buses to this parallel master bus to help counteract the effect that the main compressor is having on my original master bus. In my DAW, I can do this by clicking and dragging from the I.O. button on my kick bus to the parallel master bus, and then do the same for my snare bus as well. Make sure you set this to pre-fader, which I can do by selecting this option from the drop-down menu. This now gives me two separate faders, one that is the original, slightly over-compressed mix, and the other that only has the extra kick and snare being sent to it. So on this bus, I'm going to apply some compression to help accentuate the punch of my kick and snare, and then blend this back in with the fader. I'll now play you an AB of this so you can hear what selective parallel master bus compression can do for your mix. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to get your mixers to sound like professional songs, I encourage you to check out Sage Audio's mixing and mastering membership. As a member, I have to say the experience is incredible. 
Just for signing up, you receive 20 free mastered songs per year with your own dedicated mastering engineer, unlimited mixing feedback and access to Sage Audio University mixing and mastering courses, which include start to finish walkthrough sessions for various genres and 35 multi-track sessions for hands-on practice. This platform is supported by their thriving community and tight-knit network of audio engineers. Every day, I see and hear great wins in the membership from both new and seasoned engineers, noticing a huge improvement in their mixes and masters after joining. Right now, you can join the Sage Audio membership with a 70% discount using the link in the description. So join today and start creating mixes that sound like professional songs.